Hey guys, this is Leon from Leon Johnson Photography. Coming to you with a question that I had from one of my friends, Robert Spears. He's in our San Antonio Portrait Photographers Group. He asked me, um, I took an image of a girl the other day and I shot the image at one sixteen hundredth of a second. That's one slash one six zero zero. That much of a second. And he asked me, was that high speed sync? And I told him, yes, it, it, it was high speed sync. And he asked, well, Typically, I use high-speed sync to uh, overpower the sun when I'm outdoors. Now, that same principle, when you are u when you using high-speed sync indoors, the same principle applies. Essentially, high-speed sync is when you're raising your shutter speed or making your shutter uh, speed uh, operate faster, so that you're letting light less light into your camera. So. When you're outdoors and you raise your shutter speed, you're basically allowing less light from your ambient, the sun, any lights outdoors, uh, you're letting less light into your camera. Uh, in those situations, we typically light our subject with a strobe so that we'll have a bright subject and you have some contrast between your subject and the background. So indoors, the same principle applies. We are raising our shutter speed so that we eliminate all of the ambient light that is that might affect our picture. Uh, so I'm shooting in a hotel room, so I have ambient light from a couple of different um, lights and lamps around my hotel room. But these are all different color temperatures and uh, different types and things. So I don't want those affecting my image. All I want affecting my image is my strobe. So what am I doing? I'm taking my strobe. And I'm, or I put my strobe on TTL. Uh, my other conditions are I'm using a 50 millimeter Nikon lens at f1.8 and ISO 160th. The only thing that I varied in this was my shutter speed. Now I have my strobe on TTL because I don't want to have to raise and lower my uh, power of my strobe each time I go up in shutter speed. I was being lazy. So, but I wanted it to be consistent because that's, you know, the, so all the light is coming from the strobe. So, uh, first image here is at one two hundredth of a second. So as you can notice, if you look at this doorknob, if you can look at this counter over here and even the backdrop, it's bright. And these areas over here are bright because we have ambient light hitting those areas and the camera is only at one two hundredth of a second. So we could have... Uh, we have some of that ambient light being factored into the equation. Now, we go to one five hundredth of a second. Now you can see the backdrop is becoming like a little bit darker. And these areas over here are becoming darker also. Okay, so at that point we know that there's less ambient light coming into our picture. Then we're going to, I went all the way to one one thousandth of a second. At that point you can see how all the light, like all these areas over here and all these areas over here are significantly darker. So at that point, I know specifically, I know for sure that there's no ambient light coming into my camera. If I were to take a shot without the strobe, I would get a dark image because the the only thing the only thing that's lighting my subject in this background here is my strobe over here. The strobe is an Explore 600 in a 48 inch octa. Uh, so I went from one one thousandth of, of a second to one sixteen hundredth to one two thousandth to one thirty two hundredth and to one eight thousandth of a second. Okay, and the only thing that I did was like like I said, my strobe was on TTL, so I didn't have to change the power. It gets a little bit darker here at one eight thousandth of a second, but if you look at you know one one thousandth and up, they all pretty much look the same because the the only thing that's uh, happening here, no ambient light is coming into the into the picture, and it's just the strobe that's managing its power to light the subject at a consistent level. Okay, so uh, hopefully that explains the question, and hopefully I've given you guys a little bit uh, another tool to put in your toolbox. Uh, if I wanted to make my background darker, what could I do? I can move the strobe away from the backdrop. I can bring my subject away from the backdrop. Okay. And that would darken my background a little bit. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for tuning in. This is Leon and I'm signing out.